making this brief recording to help you with homework three. So for all sections, uh, homework three, these are eight fields, none of which currently should exist in your Bloomberg database, and you will need to create custom fields for each one of these eight items. So again, even though no pat exists in Bloomberg, you need to create no plat, which is the definition we're going to use in this class based on the textbook. And this is basically what you have to do to create the custom fields. So for example, FY, fiscal year, um, LY would be last year, uh, etc. And essentially, 12 month, next 12 months, TTM, trailing 12 months, etc. Uh, Stas talked about some of this in the video, which is also posted based on the lecture for today. But basically, after you create these ACE cuts, eight custom fields, you'll then create these on the RV screen for Microsoft for the whole firm Bloomberg Comps uh, custom report, which has these custom uh, four custom fields, which you can't create until you create those eight custom ratios. Then you'll take a screenshot and you'll submit that screenshot with a market cap weighted average on it and that will be your final solution. That's basically what the next homework is. That's due 10 a.m. Monday, September 21st for all sections. So let me give you a little help by helping you create the first item no plat. So again, I'm gonna to go to Bloomberg here. I'll go to Microsoft, US Equity. What I'm then gonna do is go to the RV screen. So as Stas mentioned today, you have two places where you can create custom fields within Bloomberg. You can either do it in the EQS screen or you can do it in the RV section. You cannot create custom fields in the FA section currently within Bloomberg. You can create them anywhere, but it might be easier to do it in a blank page. So click on the custom report here. And over here in this little gear menu, there's a drop down. You can click on add formula. And that's what I mean by custom fields, a custom formula to leverage the Bloomberg database with a formula that's not currently in there. So we're going to add a formula. It's going to bring up this pop-up screen. Now, over to the left are any custom fields that I've already created that are in my database, either in the historically EQS or in the RV section. And you'll see I've already done no plat and a couple of other examples for different sections. So in this video, I'm going to kind of create one for no plat. So again, go over here. So I'm going to start with no plat, my left paren. I need operating income or loss for the latest fiscal year. So here's what I'm going to do. I can either search for a field here to insert it, or I could start typing it in here, hit question mark go, and it will give me the potential of a field. So again, here, put in my left paren, I'll hit the question mark, and then the enter or go key, and it will bring up fields that already exist within database of Bloomberg. So in this case, I want operating income or loss. So I could do a search for it, or I can click on it if I know where it is. So I'll start typing in operating income or losses. So I'll select that. And then it will give me a description of what Bloomberg uses to calculate it. And then what's key here is the period that I want it to display. So here the default is trailing 12 months, but what I actually want is the latest fiscal year. So what that means is since companies report quarterly numbers, the trailing 12 months will be the last four quarters. Sometimes that's ideal. But sometimes I just want to have the last year. So for example, I might want to have 2014 fiscal year, December 31st, rather than 12 months going through today. So latest fiscal year will always be the latest reported annual fiscal year for the company. So in this case, latest fiscal year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Bloomberg. I'm going to change this to the latest year. Okay, so I'll do this number for that period, and then I'll hit select, and I'll put it into my custom field. Okay, so I've started my formula. Obviously, it's giving me an error because I'm not finished with it. Again, it'll change out of red if I do it correctly, but I haven't closed parentheses, for example. So it's going to tell me I have an error. So let's go back to the formula. So what I want to do is I want to take my latest fiscal year operating income or loss, right? I want to take that, so I'll go ahead and close that paren, and I'm going to multiply that by left paren, and I want to multiply by one minus, take another left paren, and then I want my latest fiscal year effective tax rate. 
So again, I can put in the question mark, get the go or enter key. And then again, this is kind of similar to the name of the field. So I can start typing in effective tax rate and it'll show me there it is. Select that. Again, it gives me the description. The period that I want, I want to match that for the latest year, which will be the latest fiscal year. I'll select that. So one minus that tax rate. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> that tax rate's going to come in at like 35 or 28. Now, I'm going to want that as a percent, just based on the nature of what I know that the, the data in Bloomberg is going to be reported at. So to get that to be a percent, to do the one minus, I'm going to divide that number by 100. So instead of 0.28, sorry, instead of 28, I want it to be 0.28. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide it by 100. And then I'm going to close off two parens to get my order of operations for that. And then to get my order of operations for that. And then I'll basically save this. And then it's going to ask me what I want to name it. So I'm going to name this no plat and then basically save it. Now, in this case, I'm going to name this no plat 2 because I already have a no plat in my database. You should name yours no plat. And then it'll create a custom field, the database, which is available either in the RV section or it would be available in the EQS section. So once you name it and then you save it and once you've saved it and named it, You'll see it over here in the database, no plat 2. Then this is no longer red and it's telling me that it's a good field. Now I have two choices. I can either close this and use it later, or if I want to bring it right into that custom report, I could click save and use. Right? So what's going to happen is once I create all these fields, right? So I'll do that eight times for each one of those custom fields, then I'll come over here to custom and I'll start creating my report. So for example, one of the things I'm going to want you to do in the report is I'm going to want you to put in the op ROIC, which you're going to create. Okay. Now, <clears throat> basically, once you create that custom field, you do all eight. You come here to add column in the custom template, op ROIC. It'll tell you in Bloomberg that it's a custom field versus a Bloomberg field, which again, you can access the RV in the EQS section. So again, I'll choose the custom field and then I'll hit enter or go and then it'll give me the app ROIC for Microsoft and its peers. The other key thing, remember, is under settings, or global settings, you need to make sure that market cap weighted average is checked. So you'll do this for the four items, op ROIC, you'll do it for expected growth rate, you'll do it for cycle time, you'll do it for WAC, those four things will populate in the report, and here's the nice thing, this number will always be for the latest fiscal year. In fact, if you hover over it, that's the formula you created. So I know that this is the latest fiscal year that's reported for all those companies, no matter when I use this custom field, because that's what I've chosen for the custom field to be. I can then save this report so it shows up on this menu as something that I could quickly access for any company. So it might be something you want to do, but to complete the homework, the final step is you can come up here and you can do it one of two ways. But a simple way to do this is you can come up here and you can click on this button, which is take a screenshot. So you can save the screen as a file. Uh, you can also grab the screen um, and Stas talked to you in a video about how to email the screen to yourself. But basically that's what you're going to have to submit as your homework. Relatively straightforward assignment. Um, we will use these custom fields pretty much throughout the semester. So each of you will need to have this created in your database. Once you do this, this is homework three. Uh, submit the file and uh, then we'll be ready for homework four next week as well as an additional Bloomberg lab assignment. This will complete the video.